Mice Shrimp. Much for joining for Tasty Time. Hi, I'm Katie O'Reilly and welcome to Katie O's Food Carnival. In the summertime, we want to be free wearing sundresses, fun clothes, fun prints that express the heat and excitement of the season. We also want to do that with our eating. We want to eat different things that embrace the freshness of all the vegetables and herbs around us, but sometimes we run out of ideas. Well, in Katie's summer eating, we're going to jump into the Carnival kitchen and explore some new options. Join me in the kitchen. Hi, I'm Katie O'Reilly and welcome to the Carnival Kitchen, Katie O's Food Carnival, summer eating part three because summer is a great time to bust out some new ideas and techniques. So what I've got going on here is like across the board using some of those summer fresh ingredients and some of these items are room temperature which is really unique. It's actual yummy summer eating. Mm. I'm gonna start with number one right in front of us, this incredible chicken with herbs de Provence. It's been marinating six to 24 hours depending on how long and then it bakes in its marinade and juices in the oven. It's incredible. And I'm serving it with crispy chicken skin. Let me show you that quick marinade. Here at the Carnival Kitchen, I love to work with chicken thighs. The reason is, is it's dark meat, so it's got a little more gaminess, a little more moisture, and it is really absorbent of flavor. So let's get to marinating. Now this is gonna be a very palatable, recognizable marinade, and it really includes lemon juice, garlic, olive oil, white wine, and herbs de Provence. I have six skinless, boneless chicken thighs. Now you can definitely do it with the skin on if you'd like, or bone in if you'd like. However, I'm gonna show you a little technique with that skin I did pull off, so we'll get to that eventually. But let's dive into this marinade because this is the magic and it's where it happens. So we're gonna start with half a cup of olive oil. And like I said, this is six thighs. Look at this, a full cup of finely chopped fresh herbs de Provence. Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. If you're not familiar, those are delicious. I can smell them right now. This is a third of a cup of combination salt and pepper because we really have to get some flavor in there. This is a marinade, remember. And a, th a fourth of a cup of ground garlic. Gotta get that garlic in there. Fresh squeezed lemon juice. A heaping, overheaping cup, I would say. And a half a cup of white wine. Beautiful, beautiful mixture. Spread this all together, make sure it covers everything. Cover this, set it in your fridge at least six hours up to overnight. That's gonna marinate and then you're gonna put this all in your baking dish and bake it in the juices. It's gonna be incredible. Let's get to that skin I was talking about though. This is a technique that you may have seen recently. This is chicken thigh skin. Look at that, peeled right from it. It's very raw. You can either set this on a baking sheet with some oil and bake it in your oven or stick it right in your deep fryer. And lo and behold, you're gonna get a crispy, beautiful treat with that's gonna add texture to your dish. Flavor, texture, mm, everyone's gonna be dying for this piece. And with that, I have paired it with a risotto. And this is my summer version of risotto. And it's kind of a little bit of an artistic stretch, but I'm calling it the BLT risotto. But what it actually is, pancetta, peas, I'm topping it with burst tomatoes and just a teeny touch of arugula. Let's check out how easy making risotto can be because so many of us think it's a scary item to make on your own, but it's not. Let's do it together. Butter, half a stick, a cup 
Actually, let's get our onions sauteed just a minute. We want to just soften those. That is a cup of chopped onion. Stir this around, and I've got, I used my pan to saute and crisp up my pancetta already. And now I've got the flavoring in there as well, so we are keeping those flavors contained and adding to that risotto robustness. So watch me, these are nice and beautiful. We're gonna add now a cup of Aborio rice. And this is traditional, but I'm gonna tell ya, risotto takes a while. So we wanna toast up this rice. We wanna add, at this point, a little bit of garlic, a full tablespoon, maybe a touch more, a little heaping tablespoon, if you will. We like that. And we're gonna add a little white wine at this point. Oh, steam it up. I've got some chicken broth ready to be added. Liquid, you stir it as the liquid absorbs and just keep adding liquid. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be right back, speeding up the process with a little kitchen magic, which is what I like to do. Watch this. As it absorbs the broth, we just keep adding more until it's got that creamy consistency that we want in our risotto. So we're gonna do that. And once it's to a point where the softness and texture is how we really wanna see it, we're gonna start adding some of our other ingredients. And in this risotto, I'm adding saffron, which I've added already a little, but you can see those threads are gonna turn it that bright yellow color. Still stirring, still adding broth, and just getting it going on. Because it's gonna absorb as much as we want it to. So if you like your risotto nice and soupy and liquidy, Keep going with that. Eventually we're gonna be adding some cream, peas, pancetta, and that is gonna be incredible with some cream. This is our BLT risotto. Pancetta being the bacon element, super salty and good. The peas represent our lettuce because they're earthy, and then the onions we've already put in. It's our BLT risotto. Oh, it's decadent and fun. Let's add those peas, stirring. Make sure they're not too cold. You don't want your risotto to seize up. They should be about room temperature. These are some gorgeous summer peas, bursting with flavor. Our crisp pancetta in small cubes. Now, add slowly on the pancetta because pancetta is very salty. Small cubes go a long way, and we don't want to over-salt our risotto. So see the magic happening right in front of us? A little bit more broth to keep it going. And soon we're gonna hit it with our cream and our cheese. And some people don't believe in cheese. I definitely like Parmesan cheese in a risotto. And let's hit it with a little cream. You're gonna see the consistency sort of change. That is just heavy cream. Getting it going on in there. This is our finishing touches right before service. This should be all absorbing. Do you see that? Absorbing right into that gorgeous rice. And like I promised, a little Parmesan. Oh, wait until we take a bite of this one together. BLT risotto. And this risotto with that salty pancetta is totally the BLT. I've topped it with the cherry tomatoes, which I've just burst in the oven and are growing in my garden. And this chicken, like I said, I'm using the thighs. Could, cannot be beat. The moisture is incredible. And those herbs and that lemon, it's summer on a plate. I'm in the south of France. I'm eating it right here. But this is the real technique. All right. I know you hear the crisp. Talk about texture. Incredible. Mmm. Brilliant. Brilliant in summer. Actually, brilliant all year round, but it's great in summer, so I embrace that one. 
All right, where are we moving next? Pasta is delicious. Pasta is embraced. I like to make it with a little lighter ingredients. A quick bolognese using turkey, ground turkey instead of beef, adds a little more summer svelte. Turkey is usually leaner than beef. We're in our bathing suits a lot. We need the protein, but we don't want the extra fat. So watch me wait while I make a shortcut bolognese with turkey. All right, turkey bolognese. Simple wise, this is not a complex dish. This is just getting those flavors infused so we can eat something different. And the turkey makes it a little lighter. Let's start off, I've got my olive oil, nice and hot, a little onion, carrot and celery. We wanna soften those and cook those down beautifully. Then what we're going to do is add our garlic, always garlic in anything Italian, as well as combine it with our already sauteed, crisped up turkey. And I'm just using plain ground turkey. You can use turkey sausage if you want to, or any kind of chicken, or it depends on what you like to work with. I think turkey absorbs flavor beautifully. It's like a blank canvas. So we want to get that turkey in there. All right, and what is next? Look at the spices going on. This is where the Italian magic happens. Dried oregano, about a third of a cup. A little dried thyme, a little bit of dried basil, all of those being a third of a cup, and then let's go for some fresh basil. I love fresh basil in the summer. And we're gonna just combine this so all of this gets right in, in that turkey meat. Oh, I wish you could smell it with me. And we're moving fast. You see how quick and easy this is? Now we're gonna add, the carrots are gonna add a little sweetness too, which is really nice, but some chopped canned tomatoes. I don't choose the ones with any flavoring in those. I just use straight up. I like a little red wine at this point. Add a little moisture. And then, just for a little bit of rounded out sweetness, a little tomato paste, use your discretion on that one. You don't wanna always have it too much. You can't take away, you can always add more. Let's let this reduce. We're gonna get it a little bit more tomato-y. And, we're about to mix it with our pasta. And I always like to toss my pasta into that hot sauce. Cook your pasta al dente, toss it in that sauce, it'll continue cooking a little bit. But the flavors get infused into that noodle. And that is really what makes you wanna keep going back for more and more bites. Any kind of basil, parmesan, it goes in the summer. Put it on everything if you can. All right, now the steak. A sirloin, it's beef tagliata, okay? It is incredible for summer because it's grilled, but then it's served room temperature. I'm gonna show you how to build this one so you know what the proper ingredients are. Beef tagliata is incredible because it's not a hot dish, it's a room temperature dish, but it has the smoky flavor of the grill. We're starting with the sirloin steak. Now what I've done is just rubbed it with olive oil and some fresh herbs. I love rosemary, salt and pepper, keep it real simple. Throw it on the grill, let it rest, bring it to room temperature and slice it. It can be almost a little bit more rare to medium rare depending on your liking. Now this dish is gonna be paired with this incredible eggplant. Look at these thin strips of eggplant just seared slightly on the grill and your zucchini. Look at that paper thin. When they hit that heat, they just kind of melt and get soft, but they don't change consistency too much. And we are going to end up layering eggplant with zucchini. Look at this incredible, I love, I love Parmesan cheese that is straight from a big block and shaved right off because it has the most moisture and creaminess. And then you layer your little meat on there, continue to layer, do a little olive oil drizzle on there, and 
a balsamic drizzle, olive oil drizzle on some super peppery arugula. Oh, that's gonna really top the plate. And if you can see how incredible this beef turns out, a little of that Parmesan oh, with the eggplant and the zucchini. This is your garden steak dinner. Summertime has never tasted quite so delicious, inviting and robust. The flavors are all there. Like I said, I like a little balsamic on my arugula, a little olive oil for a little acidity, but not too much to wilt it. That's real simple, summer eating. You don't need much food in the heat. That's great. And last but certainly not least on this one is a vegetarian mushroom barbaresco. And this is kind of made with a base of red wine, shallots, garlic, a ton of mushrooms, and tomatoes. So whether you use a marinara or those rustic canned tomatoes, whatever suits you, what you really want to do is make sure it's a vegetarian option, but those mushrooms infuse a meatiness and then served on parpadel because parpadel is a noodle that has a bite, but it also, it's kind of light, but absorbs the sauce so well. So it makes you feel very, very Italian. Yeah. Mmm. Sits on your tongue really well. It kind of just like glazes over your tongue and makes you taste all that sauce. I will be right back with some more techniques for summer eating. Hi, Katie O'Reilly. Welcome back to the Carnival Kitchen. Summer eating includes fish. And fish on the grill or fish in parchment, it's all about the flavors you infuse into that fish and how you make it so delectable and inviting. I love parchment paper for fish as one of the techniques of cooking it and holding in all those flavors, keeping it moist, and serving it so easily. It's a parcel. It's so cool. In this particular, I call this Mediterranean Branzino. So the fish is actually a Branzino, and the Mediterranean flair comes in because I've got grilled lemon, Kalamata olives, tarragon, which is such a summery ingredient, fresh tomatoes, capers, and strips of red pepper with a little zest of rustic sun-dried lime. Ah, oh. The citrusy hues and then the salty brininess of the capers and the olives really makes this fish come alive with flavor. It's very light in calories because you don't need much butter or oil to cook it. You can cook it in your oven. You can cook it on your grill. Mm. It's incredibly bright with all those flavors infused right into it. Second to none is a grilled snapper. Snapper on the grill with cilantro, garlic, lime, marinade. Look at this rustic plate. You're probably like, how do I build this at home? Well, let's build it together. Take a look. Grilling fish is so incredible in the summer. It's one of the, my favorite things to do. But how do we make it rustic, delicious, and going up a new level? Let me show you. This is a total countryside from Ireland. Pulling from the garden kind of dish. Using that grill and all those fresh herbs, which I love to do. Fresh as fresh can be. Okay, avocado, I think, is always an added creaminess. And I am going to, I've already kind of scored this so that it is cut. So when it comes out, it'll be half slice, half cubes. It doesn't have to be exact, but you want it not to be too mushy because we're not going to mush it up. I have a marinade here that is really important. This is olive oil, white balsamic, a little white vinegar, and a little bit of lime juice and salt and pepper. And this is just going to glaze this avocado so beautifully. Okay, so that's going to be one of our ingredients, and we are going to do this. I have taken red snapper, thrown it on the grill after marinating it 
in garlic, cilantro, and lime juice, and olive oil. So that has the marinade already on it. It's already been grilled and plated. If you want a little extra, this was not touching the raw fish in advance. This is just extra marinade, but look at how glossy that gets. Then this is how we get it all rustic. Grilled some corn, cut it off the cob. Let's kind of throw this around and decorate with this. This is gonna add that smokiness that we're looking for. Snow peas, literally just julienne. It is crunchy and crisp and straight from that garden earthiness. Scallions always work. You can use chives, but scallion is such a light oniony flavor in the summer especially. And let's face it, who doesn't love thin sliced radishes as well? They're pretty, they're crunchy, they're peppery, they just work. So this is really becoming a fresh fish dish, but it's got the grill going on. Now you can either serve it with some fresh lime wedges. See, I'm building it so you know how to create that rustic vision for your friends, family, everybody. This is literally just fresh lime juice. And I'm just gonna put it over then so that you just get a little bit of a marinade, a citrusy kick on those. And then I like a little bit of the same olive oil mixture that we put on the avocado. And we're soon to top with our avocado chunks in varying positions for, like I said, that extra creaminess. This is going to be so delicious. And of course, garnish with, again, just a little bit more of that cilantro. So you get the real hit of the fresh herb in your nose and on your palate. Yum. This is so inviting to the eye. It's like being on the beach and knowing that your fish just swam up to your feet and now you're eating it. It's Caribbean, it's all the things. Oh, you feel tropical with all those citrusy flavors, that creamy avocado, and then the smokiness of the corn. Truly brilliant. Mm. I could eat that almost every night, and once again, so light and slender. Make sure your fresh fish is nice and fresh, your grill is nice and hot, Char it, it doesn't take long to grill. I would say three to five minutes, flip it, one minute, you're done. That's incredible. Okay, now, I love grilled vegetables, so throw them on the grill. Whatever you've got going on, don't let them rot in your fridge. Zucchini, peppers, squash, whatever you're growing, carrots, anything, get those babies charred off, and then mix some of those into a five grain rice. And what I have is black rice, purple rice, red rice, brown rice. It's all in here. Scallions, then those diced grilled peppers and carrots and zucchini, all in little bits. Also, just some delicious shallots or onions. And mushrooms, for gosh sake, are delicious as well. That is a side dish that eats as a meal. Excellent. And I will be right back with some summary desserts. Dip my shrimp. Much for joining for tasting time. Summer eating must conclude with something sweet. However, in the KDO Carnival Kitchen, I am sometimes at a loss of what that should be. So I've come up with some recipes, just a couple that are gonna incorporate those summer ingredients but still give us that sweet finish. And the first one is a carrot and zucchini cupcake, frosted in gorgeous buttercream frosting and then decorated with little green leaves and it just absolutely oozes summer. It invites us. I have many and I have big, because I don't know where my appetite's gonna be. Depends on the weather. So, bowl. And if you're growing zucchini, you know you get a lot of zucchini. So, here we go. 
Mm. Moist with just enough sweetness, that creaminess to the delicious cream cheese frosting, which I don't like a ton of cream cheese frosting, but when done with a carrot and zucchini cake, oh my God, it's exactly what your body craves. Your mouth is like, that's what I want. So good. All right, the other one is kind of a stretch for me because I'm not Danish. However, reading all the Danish people and all of my Danish friends have raved about this Danish dream cake. And it's one of those recipes get, that gets sent down from generation to generation. Very, very simple. It sounds, however, there's a little bit of technique to it. This is basically a gorgeous angel food cake covered in brown sugar and coconut and butter and milk and just caramelized in the oven. So the cake is super moist, but then that sweet caramelization on top, you can see even when I break it, it's holding together beautifully. I was so impressed with this. It's not too sweet, but that sugary coconut on top give it crunch and texture and a little bit of that Caribbean feel. Mmm. That could almost be like a breakfast sweet or an evening sweet. I love these two desserts. I highly recommend them. But more importantly, I love our time together because this is my favorite time of the week. Thanks for joining me in the Carnival Kitchen, and I'll see you next time at KDO Food Carnival.